Yo, 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 what is up? Monday. Monday. I'm going to keep doing it, apparently. All right. <laughs> All right, before we head into today's video, please go ahead and subscribe if these videos are helping you and people you care about. Feel free to comment, to share if you need more clarification, how they're helping you. Uh, I love that and that keeps the ripple effect going because one of my missions for 2020 is to help even more people and to share, have an impact and share these messages for even more people. So thank you for helping with that. All right, so today's video, the topic is you have to have it to give it. You have to have it to give it. For example, maybe... You know, if you were here right now, you're like, hey, Molly, can I have $20? And I'd be like, oh, sure. And I would check my pockets and, oh, nope, can't do it. I don't have $20. Well, I don't know, but can't you just give it to me? Well, I, I would like to give it, <clears throat> give it to you. I'm happy to give it to you. I just don't have it, so I can't give it. Go to the ATM. I'm happy if you need it. I'm happy to help. But I don't have it, so I can't give it. So that's a super simple example of this concept, right? Like if I coughed right now on someone, I cannot give them the flu because I don't have the flu. Gotta have it to give it. So in the context of what all of these videos are about with the Monday with Molly and Flip Your 20 Fridays is of course deeper level stuff than that, but those are some simple examples. So let me share how, how I've learned this over the years so it can help you. Um, create what you need from within because you got to have it to give it so before i started counseling and i was still teaching at the time um i was not very good at being empathetic to my students i didn't have great empathy for their problems or what i would have called excuses um and some were excuses some were legit problems but i didn't really have this, I didn't have the space to hold for them to be empathetic to whatever they were going through because I hadn't gone to counseling yet and I was still the tough girl mask and angry and bitter and me against the world. And if I can figure it out, they should be able to figure it out. Even though I'm trying to be up here teaching like good things, like at the core of me, I was kind of like, dude, suck it up. And if you know me well enough or you know me from back then, you know this is true and I'm going to call myself out on it because... These videos, my message here, Instagram, my book, my my presentations, it's keeping it real. I have no desire to be fake in any way. I've done that before. I think it's gross. Hashtag don't be gross. So I'm going to call myself out on it. I'm asking you to do the same for you. So the reason I didn't have, I couldn't be empathetic towards them because I didn't have self-empathy. I went through a lot of stuff, but I never looked at it from the space of, wow, that's really courageous and you survived all these things and holy cow, you're educated and productive and trying to pay it forward. I didn't see any of that because I had the mask on, angry, bitter, da, da, da. If I couldn't have self-empathy and I didn't know what it even looked like, no wonder I didn't have empathy for my students or for other people. Like in, once I figured that, I was like, oh, that's why I act like that. But once I started going through counseling and started to have empathy for myself, like, because I could, you know, I, I just, once I was able to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's my life. Because, you know, sometimes you, you compartmentalize, you disassociate, you forget, you want to forget. But once I finally acknowledged all of it and started to deal with it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's, I can't believe I overcame all that. Like, but I was able to then start to feel empathy for myself, for the younger version of me, which then allowed me to hold space and be empathetic to other people, whether it's students um, in my classroom, when I present, friends, colleagues. I understand what it feels like now. So now that I have it for myself, I can give it and I can be present and I can listen. And if someone needs advice, I'm happy to advise or have you thought of it this way? Instead of bashing, like, oh my God, suck it up, you jerk. Or you idiot, suck it up. And there are times you gotta suck, things, suck it up, I get it. But in this case, I was able to hold a more nurturing, empathetic space for them. 
but it wasn't until I had it for myself that I could give it. So where is a space in your life that you need to do that work on yourself or would benefit you to do that work on yourself? Right? Maybe it's with kindness. I mean, I look a lot, I, I know a lot of people, I don't care what age they are, not only are they not nice or are they miserable, but they're mean or they're bullies. And this is not just for kids. So if you're a teen listening, adults are bullies too. Well, I look at that, at the, the bullying topic, I think we're a little burned out on that word, but it's still a thing, so I want to like, honor it to, honor it also. But we can't just go, like, oh, to the bully, just be nice, be nicer. They don't have kindness for themselves, so they can't give kindness to other people. They're in pain, that's why they're acting that way. They're discharging it on other people, so the other people are an unfortunate target. That's when I talk about people who are mean or bullying, I look at it from the receiver's standpoint. They're in pain, man. We don't need to take it personally. It hurts. It's frustrating. Go get help. But that's not even about you. They're discharging their pain. They don't have self-love or self-kindness for themselves. How can we expect them to give it? Especially if it's a kid. But even if it's an adult, they're years and years in that, in that pattern. So where is an area for you that if you want to teach someone to be more confident? Well, you've got to have confidence yourself more loving you have self-love you want someone to be disciplined and get their work done and be focused and organized that has to you have to be disciplined yourself this could be any emotion any topic all i'm asking you to consider is this where is one area in your life that if you know you improved it and you felt good from within about this thing that you could then go and share that with others or be present with other others when they're in a space where they need that. You get to pick. And you gotta do work on it, but you gotta be aware of it to improve it. I mean, when I talk to people all the time, could be students and adults, one of our biggest things is we feel like we're not good enough. Well, I can I can have a whole different message now because I do feel good enough. I do feel worthy. I do feel like I'm lovable. In the past, I didn't. So I could not give an authentic message of, yeah, you matter. And yeah, you're good enough. It, was, it wasn't true because I didn't have it for myself. I could say the words, but it wasn't, it wasn't as meaningful. And the, the, the impact, it wasn't served in a way that was going to help others. Now it does because I have that belief from within for myself because I've done the work, <laughs> decades of work. So now I can share that, that yeah, you are good enough. Yeah, you do matter right now. If you do nothing else to prove that you're worthy, you matter right now. But I believe that in my core, but I can only give that message because I believe that message. I hope this is making sense to you. It can be kind of deep, and I'm, I'm hoping that I'm making it clear enough. If not, let me know. I'll do another video. I'll redo it if I need to make it better. I'm happy to do that. It all starts from within, from your heart, from your head, Taking care of yourself first. It's kind of like on an airplane when they say, if you're, if you're with a child, put the oxygen mask on you first. It's the same concept. Even if you're a giving, loving person, you have to take care of you first. Right? Fill your cup, put the oxygen mask on, however you want to word it, before you can then go give and help and serve others. But when you do that from within, it's not selfish. It's necessary. You have to take care of yourself so then you can give and serve and provide. I hope this video helps you. I hope it was clear. If not, again, happy to redo it if we need to, but I hope that serves you. So take care of yourself today. Do something for yourself to improve. Give yourself what you need so you then can share and give that to others. All right, I'll see you in a few days on Flip Your 20 Friday. Again, if these are helping you, please go ahead and subscribe, and uh, I will see you in a couple days. Flip your 20. Peace.